Today we're playing with MOSFETs, microcontrollers, and pulse with modulation. Welcome to Hack a Week. So in last week's video, we pulled apart the RC toy, got all these goodies out. Um, you saw me trigger the motors on some of the pins that come out of the Black Bob microcontroller. That's hard to say, Black Blob microcontroller, okay. Uh, these are relays and these motors are run via these relays. What I was doing really was triggering the relays. And someone mentioned in the comments on that video last week that you probably can't do pulse width modulation through relays. The reason being is you're turning on and off the relays really fast and that may not work. I mean, it probably would make the motor go, but it wouldn't be too practical. What you could do is turn the relay on and then modulate the voltage that feeds the motor with pulse width modulation once the relays are on. All these relays do is serve as an H-bridge. It's a, it's a double relay H-bridge. Uh, go look it up. Just, just Google uh, two relay H-bridge and you'll see how that works. So probably can't use that one this motor right here, this one actually is controlled by some motor controller chips and it goes forwards and backwards and I probably could pulse width modulate this because it's getting uh, fed via a couple of H bridges. So uh, we're going to just bypass this whole mess for now. What we're going to do is play around with what I've got set up here on a breadboard which is a single N channel MOSFET and they have a gate, a drain and a source. The drain is what feeds the, uh, the load, the motor. The source is either positive or negative depending on if it's a P-channel MOSFET or an N-channel MOSFET. And the gate is what triggers it to turn on. So you can think of a MOSFET like a switch. It's either switching a positive voltage on and off for you or it's switching a negative voltage on and off for you. This one is doing a negative voltage for us. So I've got it hooked up right now and when I trigger the gate, with the voltage here on my breadboard of, let's see, I've got it set at six volts. You can see a rise here in the uh, oscilloscope. You see the line is now up higher. So you see the pulse width happening if I just tap on it like this. So let's take a closer look at what's going on here. I've got a pretty simple setup going here. I've got this motor that's in the beginning of the Hack -a Week video, by the way, the, the spinning uh, likeness of yours truly on a motor and here's the MOSFET set up on the board I've got the uh, oscilloscope leads connected to that and here's my power coming in and this is my gate that I can trigger by applying voltage to it so the motor is on or the motor is off so at that speed if I just go full on voltage and trigger the, uh, the MOSFET the motor spins at that speed. So what if I want to go for a slower speed? Well, I can modulate it by touching it and letting go. And depending on how long I stay on there and let go, the time duration of my pulses of touching it will affect the speed of the motor. So I can go slow, or I can go a little faster, or I can go wide open. Well, let me bump up the voltage to 12 volts. We'll get a little faster rate of spin. Okay. Now you'll really see the difference when I just touch it a little bit. Or if I do it a lot. Or wide open. So what we can do is we can use a microcontroller to modulate those pulses that trigger the gate. And we can actually alter the speed of the motor. And in fact, that's what I do when I use a Arduino to control some of the robots I've built. I'm just sending pulse width modulation to the H bridge, and then the H bridge is actually controlling the motor. So we'll take a look at what that looks like once we get it hooked up to the Arduino on the oscilloscope, and you should see a square wave. And uh, we'll just do a little drawing of that so you get a little bit better idea of what pulse width modulation really is. Okay quickie explanation of what's going on with pulse width modulation. Let's draw a little graph. This is time 
and this would be voltage and uh, let's see we will do a pulse width this is zero volts and let's just call this five volts so let's say you uh, you want to drive the motor at, at medium speed you would send a pulse and you would pause for let's say that much time send another pulse pause for about this much time and another pulse so during this amount of time from here to here we've only got three pulses of voltage so during that much time the motor is only getting a little bit of voltage it's only getting that amount added to that amount added to that amount so that would be our total amount of time that it's actually getting driven by voltage now if we uh, draw our graph again remember this is zero volts this is time this is voltage rising here's five volts if we did a pulse that went like this for a longer duration and a shorter amount of rest time and a longer duration and a shorter amount of rest time and a longer duration in that same amount of time we now have probably triple the amount of time that the motor is actually getting energized with five volts so this would make the motor go faster so that's pretty much what pulse width modulation is all about I've uploaded a simple sketch to this Leonardo that basically reads the value of pin 3 which is determined by the position of this potentiometer and as I turn it up the motor goes faster as I turn the potentiometer down the motor goes slower so as we do that we're changing the speed of the motor because we're changing that pulse width so let's take a look at that on the oscilloscope all right, we got the motor running on the old analog Tektronix 453. So remember now, this is an old analog scope, so it's not gonna just automatically dial in the uh, time base for me. I'm gonna have to play with this a little bit. But I want you to look at it at least so you can see what's going on. And this is the way things would look on an old scope back in uh, the 60s and 70s. This thing was made in 1968, still works great. You can see the pulse width. This is a square wave. You won't see a line rising up like you do on the newer digital scopes. You only see these little pulses at the top. This shows you the width of each pulse going across here. Now as I turn the speed up, it'll go out of phase for a minute. But as I get to a certain speed, it'll come back in and you'll see more of these pulses over this amount of time. It gets a little jumbled up right now, but as I get up to a certain pulse, see it comes back. Notice how the width of each one of the pulses is longer now, and the motor's going faster. So it's pretty much the opposite of what you saw before. There's a longer on time for each pulse, and a shorter off time. And if I go back down to that other speed, it's pretty much the opposite. There's a very short on time and a longer off time. So I think from that you can get the basic idea of how pulse width modulation works. You can actually change the speeds by varying the on and off cycles. That's also known as a duty cycle. So, there you have it. A pretty simple explanation of pulse width modulation. I hope you learned a thing or two and I encourage you to experiment with it. In fact, if you want to play around with this whole setup, I'll take some photos of this and give you a basic uh, drawing of the schematic how to hook up a potentiometer with an Arduino to control a motor with pulse width modulation. I'll have the simple code that I wrote on the uh, project page. Just go to hackaweek.com and look for this week's uh, project. Just type in PWM if you want to search for it and you'll find the project. I'll post it also down in the video description. Uh, I use PWM on a lot of my projects for uh, robots. Just uh, do a search on my website for a robot and you'll find some of those I built. You'll even find the code and you can see how I wrote the code to make the pulse width modulation drive motors. I used an H bridge in that case. That's for another video along with some of the stuff about MOSFETs. We'll cover some of that in some future videos. 
So I hope uh, that you're inspired. And if you are and you want to donate, check out the donate link on the Hack a Week website and do what you will with that. Hey, shout out to the Amp Hour guys. Nice shirt. I might have to do a shirt for Hack a Week. Got to dream something up. Well, anyway, till next time. Mmm, analog electronic smell.